And we can actually see here that the uh, working length check is at length. So despite the fact that we've had um, no zero read on our apex locator, the, 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 the x-ray indicates or kind of in the vicinity. And it's at this point you need to kind of make a decision. Hello, welcome to this week's uh, clinical case. I am really excited to show you this case today because this is, um, you know, we, we get these types of cases um, uh, referred to us and, um, you know, we, we do the consultation for, for the, these for these types of teeth and I'm always a little bit um, sort of anxious about getting a nice result because I know that these types of cases, these deep curve bends, um, they're fraught with danger and difficulty and there's a real chance that you can perforate these teeth you can uh, you can block these teeth and also I can fracture files in these teeth. So the name of the game here is just to be really, really careful and take your time. So before we get into the case, what I would say is if you want to support the channel, the, the quickest and easiest and and it's free is a uh, way is to is, is just to subscribe. So if you just hit that button, it takes you half a second. It just supports the channel. And I promise if you hit the button each week, the videos will get better and it'll just um, expand your knowledge of root canal. If you want to take the support even further, we've got a membership program. We've got early access to content. So sometimes I'm running about three weeks ahead with these videos. So you get to watch the videos three weeks early. And also now we've got exclusive content. So we've got a fantastic um, hour long access video, which is absolutely amazing. So if you could either hit the subscribe or join the membership program i'd be much much appreciated so let's get into the case so this is a lower left five um this tooth had had a uh, a restoration placed on this i think it's a composite quite recently by our external referring dentist and the tooth was exhibiting symptoms of irreversible pulpitis so the patient was having severe pain that lasted more than 10 minutes but she was not having any pain on biting so obviously we've consulted the patients and we've warned her about this sort of deep bend at the end and, and we've, we've explained all the issues to her and she's happy to move head and forward. So we pick up the video with um, me just removing uh, the, the temporary filling because what I do believe is that the referring dentist has accessed this tooth and they have uh, dressed the tooth and they've dressed it with a bit of cotton wool, which anyone who knows me, I hate cotton wool um, with, with GI because it just gets stuck. It gets sort of enmeshed and sometimes it can be quite difficult to pull out. Although that's been said, sometimes PTFE, my preferred choice of dressing material can be also difficult to remove. And we have a little bit of an assessment and we can see here that there's been an excess and um, I can see that the, the clamp is a little bit, bit, little bit loose. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to remove the, the clamp and I'm going to place uh, a, a sort of smaller clamp here that's going to sort of hold the tooth a little bit better. And I'm also using a little bit of liquid dam. And then we're going to do our uh, initial irrigation and kind of an assessment of the tooth itself. I look to see the orifice and it's, it looks like it's a bit small so i'm just going to use a size 25 high flex as a bit of an orifice opener just to open up that canal space just so we can get enough uh, straight line x as possible and you can see that we've opened up the orifice a bit more and then i'm going to go straight in with my size 10 d find and you'll notice here that i've made a little bend at the end because i'm anticipating that um, the, I'm anticipating the bend essentially. So we're having a little tiny watch wind here with our sized ND finder. And I feel like we're sort of negotiating down. I place the D finder um, on the apex locator and we're nowhere near the end. Okay, so what I'm gonna have to do is have a little bit of a fiddle around with the stopper because maybe the stopper is getting in the way for me negotiating down. So we've moved the stopper and it's still getting kind of um, you know, I, I can maybe feel that the stop is probably getting in the way here. Um, my, my assertions are wrong, by the way. But in this case, what I've decided to do is just to remove the stopper on the file to give us that extra length. And, um, and this, this might be the reason why we're not negotiating all the way uh, to zero. But in fact, when we place uh, the, the file back in without this rubber stopper, again, we're still coming up short. We're not getting any further. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a smaller diameter file. I'm gonna use an eight D finder, and then we're gonna make a tiny little bend at the end, and hopefully this is gonna negotiate down. And again, 
we hook it up to the apex locator and we're still a million mil, million miles away so what i'm um thinking about now the furthest point we've reached by the way is 23 millimeters so our assertions now is maybe we're getting uh, stuck further up the canal so i'm going to use this patented tooth saver file uh, action so in this case i'm using a tooth saver 1403 uh, 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 rot rotary file but in this case I'm going to use it in reciprocation and the reciprocation is 400 forwards 50 backwards and basically the way we do it is we place the hand file in the canal off and then we turn the reciprocation motion on and I'm going to drag it out and what this does is it uh, helps us negotiate down the canal safely that's really really important and then I'm going to get a size 6 uh, C plus file. They don't do D finders in 6, unfortunately. And then um, because we've sort of shaped the canal further up using that patent uh, tooth saver action, where it seems we're getting a tiny, tiny little bit further. So a little bit further than 23. Um, so we're going to go up with a higher diameter file. In this case, we're using a size 8. And then again, we're getting a tiny, tiny little bit further. But when we place our apex locator onto this, again, we are not in the kind of vicinity of the apex. And and when we sort of pull out this eight and we have a little look about how far we've got, we've we've managed to get one millimeter, millimeter extra than we did before, so we're at 24. So I'm really, really concerned at the moment about this deep bend. I'm concerned about all of the iatrogenic damage that can be caused. So what I'm going to do, and I don't usually do this, I'm going to take a working length check with a size 10 D finder. So I'm going to uh, place this D finder at 24 millimeters very, very carefully. And we can actually see here that the uh, working length check is at length. So despite the fact that we've had um, no zero read on our apex locator, the, 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 the x-ray indicates we're kind of in the vicinity. And it's at this point you need to kind of make a decision. You know, do you push the hand files even further to try and get that zero reading? Or do you accept that we've not got the zero reading on the apex locator and we're pretty much near to the end and it's best to fill as far as we can get? And during the consultation period, you're going to be speaking to the patients and you're going to be explaining all these things that can happen. And obviously you have a conversation with a patient and you ask them, you know, you're happy for us to just fill as far as we can get on the x-ray, it looks at the end. And you know what? 999 times out of a thousand, the patient goes, yeah. Okay, you get the other one who just says no, but most patients understand the fact that it's a difficult thing to do and fill into as far as we can get. So we say, because we're not a million miles away on the x-ray, that's acceptable to them. So our zero reading in brackets is 24. I'm going to use the 1403. I'm going to measure that, and then we're going to use this painting method again, where we're going to push the hand, uh, we're going to push the file off all the way to as far as it can go. We're going to turn it on, and I'm going to sweep it backwards. And you can see now that it's sort of pushing back; it's sort of moving towards the apex. Once we've used the 1403, I'm going to use an 1802, and this is going to be uh, 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 the 24 millimeters again. And we're going to use the patented movement again. Okay, so we're going to push this all the way to length, and then we're going to turn it on. It goes 400 forwards, 50 backwards. And what you don't want to do is you don't want to sort of start shaping this with it still on because you lose that kind of safety. If you're interested in this, and we've got a video on this, I'll put in the description box below because we've got a full case on this type of thing. And we're going to do lots of irrigation. Some more re recapitulation. Don't forget to check the files at the end. They can get a little bit unwound and you can fracture them at this point because they've taken a lot of brunt. And then I am going to use a 2004 um, tooth saver file at 24 millimeters. And this is me shaping at the furthest point we've reached. So I'm not knocking off 0.5 millimeters in this case because we haven't got zero reading on our apex locator. And then you'll notice here that I'm not using a normal rotary action in this case. I'm still using that painted method, although I'm breaking the rule a bit here because I am turning it on and giving it a little bit of a push downwards. Um, I think um, doing this um, is, uh, is, is difficult because sometimes you can, um, you can uh, perforate teeth like this. So just be very, very careful using that method. And again, it's just a little bit of recapitulation. Um, again, be careful, more shaping, more shaping until you've reached a 24 and you feel like that is nice 
and smooth and it's not getting any friction while you're shaping down there. We're then ready to obturate and I'm using these generic uh, 2004 GP cones and these GP cones don't have this kind of constant taper associated with them. Um, once they reach a, a maximum diameter of one millimeter, they stay the same size. So that's really, really important in teeth that have really super bendy curves. And then I always check the tip diameter on these and you'll notice here that it actually isn't a size 20 when you use our gutter cutter. So again, really, really important. You just check everything. There's always that kind of backstop. And then I'm going to measure this GP cone at 24. We're going to obviously grip the cone at the 24 mark. We make a kind of a little bit of a kink in the GP cone. And we know that that's the point where when we push this GP cone to length, it's gonna sort of marry up with our point at which we know where it needs to be at 24. Being really, really careful not to bend the end on these GP cones. So you're just gonna be pushing this really, really gently because the size 2004 GP cones are really, really fragile. So you're just sort of pushing this really, really gently to length. And when we look at the X-ray, you know, we've got that really nice uh, 90 degree bend here, you know, and to length, it looks absolutely fantastic. And when we pull the GP cone out, we can see there's a little bit concertina at the end, just mainly because it's so thin. We're then ready to obturate. We're gonna do our final irrigation protocol. We're gonna do sodium hypochlorite activated. And then we're gonna, um, we're gonna do that. We're gonna to continue to do that until the liquid runs clear. We're then gonna use 17% uh, EDTA activated. Keep doing that until it runs clear. And then the final rinse with sodium hypochlorite activated until it runs clear. And we look at the uh, canal space here looks nice and clean. We're ready for our paper point drying. And in this case, we're going to use the sterile wave one gold uh, paper points. Um, granted, the taper on these aren't great, but in fact, I feel like, you know, we're getting a nice sort of drying um, um, action with these paper points. So I'm, so I'm, I'm happy. And then we're gonna uh, um, we're gonna obturate with uh, a bioceramic. We're using one fill here with these visco tips. I'm gonna directly inject the bioceramic into the canal space. Only do this if you're using high magnification. In this case, if you haven't got high magnification, you're just gonna get the GP cone. You're gonna coat it with our uh, with your uh, bioceramic sealer. We're then gonna place a file to length. I'm going to introduce the bioceramic to the full length of the root canal. And then, you know, after further thought, I thought to myself, you know, I'm not really happy with the sort of concertinaed nature of this GP cone. So what I've done is I've got a, a new uh, GP cone out and obviously check the end to see if it's 20. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to do this because I'm pretty confident this has been shaped really, really well. And what I'm doing here is I'm just very, very gently pushing the GP cone to length. Um, this is the great thing about uh, dentistry is that you, um, you know, sometimes you just change your mind, don't you? And you notice here that you, I'm doing a little bit of pumping here. I don't often do this, but because I know I'm not at zero, I want to try and sort of encourage some of the sealer just to reach all the way to the end. And then we're ready just to cut off the excess uh, GP with my heated plugger. And then we're just gonna condense it down with a Mac 2 plugger. Again, it's just really, really simple. I know in this case that the, uh, the tooth's been shaped really, really well. So I'm not gonna be shy when I push this, uh, this Mac 2 plugger down to length. I'm gonna really make sure I condense the GP and vis-a-vis -vis the sealer into all the little nooks and crannies. Hopefully I'm gonna sort of try and get some of the sealer into that apical end. And um, once we've uh, condensed the GP and the sealer down, we're gonna give a bit of a clean up with our ultrasonic and we uh, look at the post-op radiograph and you know it looks really really nice it looks super duper we've got a really really nice conservative shaping protocol here we've managed to reach around this sort of deep bend and um you know some might say that this is a this is a compromise um, but I suppose in a way, dentistry is always about compromises, isn't it? It's always about um, doing the attempt of the root canal. But um, in this case, I am very, very happy. And um, that's it. End of the case. Very, very happy. In this case, I'm really, really happy. And all I've got to say now is thank you for watching. Again, same as before, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. It's simple, it's free, it's easy, it takes you half a second. If you, want to, uh, if you want to support the channel even further, we've got a membership program at YouTube. We've got early access to content. So if you just can't get enough of these videos, 
You can watch uh, our videos that are scheduled for the week or week after earlier. And we've also now got exclusive content. So we've got a, a, an hour long uh, root canal access video that you can watch, which is absolutely fantastic. And overall, have a lovely day and I'll see you next Friday for the next clinical case. Bye-bye.